Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue and welcome to 2016 and the 10th season of Hello Bonjour Alberta. I'm Marc Lalonde. And I'm Anne Boiteau. And in this episode, we are very pleased to uh, introduce to you two of the most respected persons, I think, in the city. Remember, a couple of the boys in blue, so to speak. We have uh, Roger Chaffin, our chief of the Calgary Police Service, and Mike Power, Staff Sergeant Professional Standards Section. I'll have to ask you about that. Welcome, guys. Well, thank you. Welcome. So, Chief, <coughs> tell us where you're from. Well, I'm one of those born and bred Calgarians. I was <laughs> raised here. My parents were from here in the surrounding rural areas of Alberta, and uh, I've uh, raised my family and my children here as well. So, I'm one of those rare, rare. Calgarians. Very rare, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, you went to school here? I went to high school here. I've uh, done all my uh, my adult career here as well. So I've I have very little in my background in other cities. A little <coughs> bit, of, a brief period of time in Toronto and Vancouver for a little bit, but just a few months, and otherwise the entire bit's been here. So, so is there any area of Calgary you have don't know fairly detailed? You know away? what? I, I know the city pretty <laughs> well, but I'd say as, as the city grew, uh, <laughs> I started to find there are parts of the city that I don't know very well. So. The city expands so rapidly in, in our, our better times, but I know the city pretty well. So. so it's like everybody else. I guess it's those areas you've lived in and, okay. uh, and all of that once it gets to a certain size. Uh, we'll come back on the Chief of Police question in just yeah. a moment. Uh, Mike Power, yes. welcome. Welcome. And uh, you're not from Calgary, I'm guessing. I am not. I am <laughs> uh, from a small town called Thetford Mines in uh, Quebec, uh, born and raised in Quebec. Um, raised in a French environment, so my fr uh, first language is French. Um, my parents sent me to English school, which is somewhere I didn't want to go when I was young. I wanted to be in school with all my friends, uh, but it paid benefits in the long run. You don't know when you're a child, but it does. Uh, look where I am now in an English community. Um, I went to school uh, in Quebec. Uh, it's, uh, you need a diploma to be a police officer, so I went to college in Montreal. I studied in uh, police technology for it's a three-year program. I did my um, technical skills at uh, the police college in Nicolette uh, and I started my career in Quebec in 1990. Uh, I was there for eight years and then finally uh, moved to Calgary after I met a girl from out west and moved to Calgary in 1998. <coughs> so did you marry that girl? Yes, we are married, <laughs> uh, two kids. Um, she <coughs> moved to Quebec. We lived uh, in Val d'Or, which was the last uh, post I had in uh, Val d'Or, Quebec. It's a little bit north of Montreal. And um, her family said that they're looking for experienced members in Calgary. So I, was, uh, I applied and I was hired as part of the, uh, what they call the first retread class in 1998. There was 26 of us from uh, about uh, six or seven different police departments all over Canada that joined the Calgary Police Service. And they actually call that a retread we, department? I think, yes, that's what they called us back then, the first <laughs> retread class. <laughs> So is all of your experience in, in city policing also? Or yes, or, yes, I worked in two police departments in Quebec. Uh, I first started my career in Valleyfield, which is just uh, southwest uh, of Montreal. And then I moved to Val d'Or, uh, and I worked there for seven years before, uh, before moving to Calgary. And did you both always think, is that what you wanted to be when you were young, a police officer, like you worked towards that goal? Or yeah. did it just happen that way. I think back uh, mm. when I applied uh, back in the 80s, you're coming out of high school and you're trying to figure out what, what you're going to do, whether you're going to go to school or where you're going to be. I happened to be driving truck and doing some work in and around the area and kn I knew that's not what I want to do with, my, with myself long term and 
uh, got interested in policing, started thinking about it. It's quite a process to get into policing, and it's a long, even then it was a very long commitment to get into policing, and so it took a while, but you know, you go through the process, and once you're in, once you get in, you, you do realize then that this will likely be the last employer I'll have for the rest of my life. It's that kind of a career. So. so, and for you, how is that, Mike? I think I knew back in high school, I had a cousin that worked for the Quebec Provincial Police. Uh, he was an under undercover officer, so that interested me a lot. And uh, it's a little different in Quebec. You need to go to school for three years, so uh, you need a diploma to be hired as a police officer. Um, so I, I knew far enough ahead in advance that I wanted to uh, be a police officer. So how do you become police chief? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, it's, uh, it's an interesting process. Uh, there's, a, there's a promotion process in policing, that's sort of how you, ladder, how you ladder up over your career, but as you get to say, the deputy chief rank, the process for chief is much different. It's a, uh, the chief at the time had announced his retirement and moved on. So it's really uh, first the, our police commission who oversees policing, uh, works with a consultancy group, and they start looking all over Canada to see who's available mm -hmm. and who's interested in being a chief. And it's quite a process of community consultation that goes underneath that is what does the community expect for policing? What does our organization expect of the next chief? And they, they, they take all that work and compile a list of desirables for this role and look at these people both external of this organization and internal in the organization. There's a long, long series of interviews. You go through panel interviews after interviews and talk about the issues, talk about what your leadership style is like and what you'd like to accomplish. And, and, but it's, you're, you're do this isolated. You don't really know if you're, who you're competing with or even what they're looking for. You're just sort of, sort of telling your story, what you think you'd like to accomplish. And then one day you'll get a phone call. <laughs> So it's more like a corporate selection process at it that is. point. It is. It's a very it's long sense. process, a very professional process, but it does take quite a while to go through okay. it. So. Okay. And what does a police chief do? Uh, I get asked that question by my family quite a bit. <laughs> um, you know, we, I have stewardship of almost 3,000 people in this organization and a, and, a, and a very strong responsibility to a community of you know, over a million people. So the police chief does a lot. The chief, the chief is really responsible for ensuring the organization is functioning properly, we're properly staffed, we're properly trained and equipped, and we're providing the kind of services that match the community's expectations. It's a, uh, I think a lot of people think of policing only as those uh, black and white cars with the red and blue lights, but policing is a very complex business. We do a spectrum of things on, from all of our outreach programs in the city, the crime prevention and uh, our intervention education efforts, along with our, the myriad of things we do on enforcement for public safety. So it's a very complex machine. It takes a lot of time and a lot of organization to keep it running well, keep it financially viable, but make sure it's serving the interests of the community. So it is quite a, uh, quite an undertaking. It's, it's really a big management job. Yes. It really is. It really challenges your idea of leadership and how to foster the best of people and, and under difficult circumstances sometimes. And also liaising with the municipal government, the province, all and that kind of stuff as well. We have a, uh, like so we have a police commission who I'm responsible to. We have our mayor and council that we talk to. We have the government of Alberta that we deal with and our policing partners both provincially and nationally. It's, it is quite a uh, a lot in terms of the partners that we um, serve with. And then I guess both of you or the whole uh, police force has to keep up with uh, new legislation. There must be ongoing training all the time and... Uh, well, so the job Mike does right. is accountability is a huge part of our business. You know, the, uh, I, when legislations and laws and the expectations of communities come up against each other. We have to make sure that not only we're serving the community well, but we're held to account. We have authorities and powers and uh, you know, the ways to restrict people's charter of rights in, in the execution of our duty. And with that comes a huge expectation to do it right and to be held to account. And that's really Mike's role in this organization, to make sure those accountability mechanisms are solid. So what sort of things do you do to help ensure that mm -hmm. is well, the case? We, we in the professional standards mm -hmm. section, uh, we have uh, a variety of investigators um, we have people on the sergeant side that take uh, initial complaints from con uh, from citizens and uh, which try and resolve or discuss the the citizens' concerns. And uh, if the the citizen isn't satisfied with uh, with the results of those concerns, it can go formal to a formal investigation where we have about 11 investigators that investigate complaints uh, about our police officers. So the members of the force get kind of a feedback loop on an ongoing basis. Is that yeah, the process sort of what is really happens? meant to be very remedial? It's meant to say, look, something went wrong. 
uh, someone in the community wasn't happy with the service they received, wasn't happy with something you did or said, and we want to make sure in the best of circumstances members get to improve their behavior, if, if, it, if it actually did occur the way it was said, improve your behavior and learn to move forward and uh, evolve yourself. There's a, there's a continuum of things we do at the very end is discipline, where there's discipline rendered for the more egregious offenses that occur. But it's, it's so important in a, in a modern policing model to have very high visible accountability. And uh, the work they do is a significant part of why the community and the police service uh, resonate with each other. Okay. So you must use some kind of metrics to kind of measure how well you're doing and, and Absolutely. that sort of and, thing. Absolutely, and as uh, Chief Chaffin said, we, we also fall under the police commission, and uh, so we have regular meetings with the, uh, with the commission, the members of the Complaints Oversight Committee, which I was at a meeting today where we discuss files that uh, come to our, our section. So what are the, uh, if you had to pick two of them, what are the two biggest issues you're facing? Uh, you know, right now in Calgary, the, uh, the biggest issue in terms of public safety is uh, and we have, a, uh, we have a, a new presence of drugs and collateral crime that comes with those drugs that we're trying to stay on top of. The second part I would say is economically we are as, a, as constrained as the rest of this province is right now. We feel every bit of the economic downturn everybody else does. So to manage our crime trends, to stay on top of public safety challenges, we have to make sure the organization stays well positioned to deal with that and that's our those are our big challenges right now is making sure that we work within our means but we still serve the interest of public safety in this city so in in your policing um, are you starting to notice an effect to, to the economic drown downturn on the types of crimes that that you're seeing or having to uh, focus on you know like I said because I've lived here my <coughs> whole life as well I mean I, I've seen the city go through this before these, these sort of downturns in the economy happen but you also notice there's a change in the community when it happens the sort of that little bit of a pall that comes over the city and and we see that now this is a pretty significant downturn and with that downturn comes uptick in crime there's this you know the issues of the presence of drugs and the crimes that go with it seem to be on the rise while that sort of pall is over the community so we're trying to manage that and deal with that and make sure people remain highly confident that public safety is there for them, that when they step outside, that they'll be safe, that they'll feel safe in the city. And Calgary's a very vibrant city, even now it's still a vibrant city, and it's a generally very safe city. And we wanna make sure that even in the worst of times, people feel that. Mm -hmm. So in uh, future plans? Well, I mean, we have lots of plans, yeah, really. I mean, our, our, our new initiatives, I guess, that yeah. we might see coming down. Yeah, you know, we're looking, we're certainly looking at lots of, right now, I'm reorganizing the service. We're working with our senior people to reorganize ourselves to make sure we're structured and positioned well to deal with our issues. So I don't know the public will see that as much, but we're certainly looking at more of our key community partnerships. The, when they have challenges in the community that are around things like domestic violence or around homelessness or mental health issues, that, and this is the time to really leverage those partnerships, is to work with those, all those service providers in the city and make sure we're all working together and doing things in the best interest of people. So I think you'll see that, you'll see more of our work with schools and education. We just opened our Youth League Center uh, recently, which is a one of a kind offering in this country and it's really a spectacular uh, uh, opportunity for young children in this uh, community to, in s school age children to come in and see features of community life and risks in community life and be educated on the challenges out there. Those, that's something that's brand new and really proud of that, something that I think will affect people's lives going forward. And uh, where is this center? That's attached right to our headquarters building. It's a, okay. uh, it's a brand new facility uh, that brings in, we'll see almost every grade six student in the city go through that facility at some point in time this year. And it really helps us, helps us connect students to the challenges in community life, whether it be drugs, gangs, cyber issues, the, the sort of things that police deal with that, and make sure young people are well positioned to make good choices going forward. So, so the best enforcement is basically prevention. Absolutely. And, and letting and people know there is help. Our youth link is booked for the next two years solid okay. with grade six classes. So, and it's a, it's a brand new version of our old interpretive center. It's uh, Well, thanks a lot, place. guys. Sorry, we're out of time. Thank you. So Thank thanks you. for watching. Uh, we've had uh, our police chief, Roger Chaffin, and uh, Mike Power, uh, staff sergeant, uh, as our guest today. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay with us. On continue en français.